Is it in the news? Those are the words of suspected serial killer Rex Hurman asking police as he was about to be put in jail whether his arrest was getting publicity. And this new information comes as authorities now say they believe it's possible Hurman has been committing murders for more than a decade and that there could be more victims. Police have also been on a hunt for, quote, souvenirs. They believe Hurman may have kept at this storage locker in Long Island. The search coming after police discovered a hidden vault in the basement of the 59-year-old married father of two, a vault filled with hundreds of guns. His home is just seven miles from where the remains of 11 people, including a toddler, were discovered, many of them bound and wrapped in burlap sacks. Bryn Gingras is out front. Investigators not done digging through the home of Rex Hewerman, the man authorities say is behind the serial killings that have haunted a New York community for more than a decade. He intended to commit these crimes. He com intended to cover up these crimes. Inside the Long Island home Hewerman shared with his wife and daughter, sources say police found a locked door and behind that, over 200 guns. Uh, he had an arsenal in his uh, in a vault that he had downstairs. Far more than the 92 guns Hurman registered in the state. Investigators also seen removing an encased doll-like figure and a Playboy magazine from the home. Sources tell CNN police are scouring a nearby storage unit. They say they're looking for possible souvenirs or trophies he may have kept after the killings. We uh, have ex executed a number of search warrants. So right now we have a flood of information and a flood of evidence coming in, and it's going to take us a while to sort of go through all of that. The 59-year-old architect is charged with killing three women, sex workers, whose bodies were found tied up and stuffed in camouflage burlap sacks and dumped along a desolate beach area more than a decade ago. The district attorney says they're close to charging him with the fourth victim in what became known as the Gilgo Four murders. It's a shocker. I mean, it's a real eye opener. With a newly formed task force dedicated to the case, a break came earlier this year when DNA from a discarded pizza crust matched a hair found in one of those burlap sacks, according to police. Authorities also believe Hewerman used burner phones and fake email accounts to research his victims, their murders, images of child abuse, and at times even taunted one woman's family by calling them after her death using her phone. The man, uh, is a, he's a demon, and, and it's really hard to get into the mind of somebody that's capable of, of committing the, the crimes that he committed. Other evidence? Witness testimony. Investigators say they have someone who ID'd Hurman's Chevrolet Avalanche seen here parked in front of his home over a decade ago as connected to one killing. That witness also describing the 6-4 Hurman as an ogre, according to court paperwork. The only thing I can tell you that he did say uh, as he was in tears was, I didn't do this. Hurman pleaded not guilty to the charges, his lawyer calling the evidence against him circumstantial. And we've learned Hewerman is on suicide watch at the jail where he is being housed. He ex is expected back in court next month. And listen, Erica, this investigation is far from over. We've seen investigators inside his home throughout the day. They've been there since uh, last week, still collecting evidence. Sources tell us they are going to use Hewerman's DNA and compare it to not only cases here on Long Island, but also the cases in New York City, whether it be missing persons or homicide cases. They're also still fielding calls through the tip line, and we've Learned they're still talking to witnesses, and Erica, that includes his wife and child. Wow. Erica? It just gives you a sense of how, how massive this investigation really is. Bryn, appreciate it. Thank you. Out front now, Suffolk County Police Commissioner Rodney Harrison, who had promised that solving the Gilgo Beach murders would be a top priority for him as commissioner. He established, of course, the task force that helped do just that. Commissioner, it's good to have you with us tonight. Um, you know, as Bryn noted, it's been three days now since the suspect was charged in the murders of three women, but had been named a prime suspect in the murder of a fourth woman, Maureen Brainerd Barnes. Um, is she reporting tonight that authorities may be close to charging him? Are you closer to charging him in that case tonight? So it's going to take a, a little time. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what the time frame is, but uh, uh, because the uh, hair follicle was somewhat damaged uh, in trying to match the DNA uh, connected to the hair, it may take uh, longer than we, we anticipate, but uh, if it does come back as a match, then we'll definitely charge him. 
uh, with the murder to Mrs. Barnes. Uh, meantime, authorities telling CNN that they're really operating under the assumption that Huerman may not have stopped killing even after the remains were first discovered more than a decade ago. Um, Bryn mentioned that they are, you know, other New York City, perhaps other areas as well, tips still coming into that tip line. Uh, when you look at how big this could be, do you believe this suspect could potentially be responsible for other murders that may not even at this point be on the radar? Well, I, I stated this uh, before. Uh, we'll see. Uh, but this investigation is still ongoing. Uh, the task force will remain intact. Uh, we'll continue to uh, search and follow any types of tips that may come in the crime stopper hotline or things that we may recover that may lead us in another direction. But uh, he's definitely somebody that uh, I'm, I'm glad that we got off the street. Uh, compliments to the men and women of the task force, but uh, there's still a lot more work that needs to be done. Have you been surprised at all by the volume of calls coming in since this arrest? I'm not. <clears throat> this is a, uh, a case that has touched the, the whole country. And uh, some of the cases, called, excuse me, some of the calls that have come in, uh, something that we definitely need to take a closer look at. Unfortunately, there are some calls that are a little far-fetched as well. So we have to kind of vet every single call that comes in, see if it's something that uh, has a little bit of a touch and, and feel to uh, our case. And if it's something that we need to go out and investigate further, we'll do as such. We've been told that the suspect's family is, is cooperating with this investigation, including his wife, his daughter who worked with him at his architecture firm. Do you have the sense yeah. that, that they had any idea he was potentially capable of these kinds of crimes? So, so what I'm being told is um, <clears throat> when we initially uh, informed them about uh, their, their husband, their father, uh, they, were, they were shocked. Um, they were disgusted. Uh, they were embarrassed. Uh, so if you ask me, I, I don't believe that they knew about this double life that Mr. Harriman was, was, was living. But uh, you know, time will tell. And once again, is there still a lot more questioning that needs to be done to the family, to friends, uh, taking a look at some of the calls that are coming in and seeing uh, what information we could gather to see if the family might have known exactly what, what Mr. Harriman was up to. Um, you know, Bryn laid out some of the details in terms of what we know about the about what's been found so far in these searches, going through that host house, uh, combing for evidence, looking for anything that looked maybe out of place. I think one thing that stood out to a lot of people uh, is this doll that was reportedly found. Um, and that too, raising questions, it was not found in the room of his children. Um, and court papers do show that the suspect made some disturbing internet searches, including searches for child pornography. Do you think there is any yeah. sort of a connection there? There could be. Uh, you know, why this doll was in the house, uh, uh, once again, we'll have to get down to the bottom of it uh, as the investigation comes, uh, comes to, uh, more, more information comes to our attention. Uh, but yes, the, some of the searches that we saw that he was doing uh, is alarming. Mm -hmm. It's very, very concerning. And uh, once again, as I, I have to make sure that everybody understands that it's a very good thing that we got this animal off the streets. So you say it's a very good thing you got this animal off the streets. One thing that really stood out to me uh, as we were learning everything on Friday was, was the <clears throat> fact that we were told that authorities moved in because they were concerned about public safety. What specifically was that concern about public safety? Was it about another woman, perhaps another sex worker you were worried was going to be murdered? Was it about broader public safety in the community? Yeah, so I, I think that might be, might have got uh, been bad information. Uh, I, I'm sure you're well aware of the case was in the grand jury, and we were looking for that indictment. And there was a belief that possibly some of that information might have gotten out. So uh, in order to uh, make sure it didn't get to our, our subject, Rex Harriman, mm -hmm. uh, we thought that it was important and imperative to move on, move in on him uh, that day. So just to clarify then for folks at home, this was more about a concern of him being somehow tipped off to what was about to happen as opposed to authorities' concerns that he may have something nefarious planned. Correct. And once again, as we, we were surveilling him uh, with our partners from the FBI. They had a, a team of individuals following him. So uh, necessary, him looking to go out and hurt somebody wasn't necessarily our mm -hmm. concern, even though he had that in him. And that's why we put that 24-hour surveillance uh, on him. But uh, we were more concerned about some of the information getting out and then him getting uh, knowledge of that and then 
maybe fleeing the country. So it, we thought it was important that we, we grabbed him that evening. Okay, appreciate you clarifying that. Commissioner Harrison, appreciate your time tonight. Thank you. Thank you.